Robert Goddard was one of the fathers of American rocketry science, and in 1920, the New York Times published a now famous editorial mocking his proposal to send a rocket into space. Quote, after the rocket quits our air and really starts on its longer journey, its flight would be neither accelerated nor maintained by the explosion of the charges it then might have left. New York Times made a really important mistake here, thinking that rockets could only work in the Earth's atmosphere. In fact, as we'll see in this section, rockets operate on the principle of conservation of momentum. Thankfully, the New York Times, many decades later, did actually publish a retraction when they realized how rockets actually work. Another really beautiful example where the conservation of momentum is a very powerful tool is analyzing the dynamics of a rocket. As we've already discussed, uh, a rocket is propelled by ejecting material out the back end. And so here, for example, we have a rocket of mass m. It ejects material out the back uh, at a rate m dot with a velocity uh, vx, so v uh, of the exhaust. And this is a one-dimensional problem, so we only need to think about motion along the x direction. This is another case where momentum is conserved, so p initial for the system is equal to p final. So in this case, we have uh, the rocket's initial momentum uh, without any exhaust, so we imagine that the exhaust hasn't been exhausted yet. This is set equal to uh, the final momentum of the rocket plus the momentum of the exhaust that has now been ejected out the back of the rocket. The rocket's initial momentum is its initial mass, m of t, times its initial velocity, v of t, and its final momentum is the mass uh, at t plus delta t times the velocity at t plus delta t. As the exhaust is being uh, fired out the back of the rocket, uh, the exhaust has some small mass, delta m, uh, and that's being multiplied by its uh, velocity, uh, which in this case is going to be the velocity of the rocket the instant before the exhaust was ejected, plus the velocity with which uh, the exhaust is ejected. So this difference here is important because the exhaust velocity, that's measured relative to the rocket, relative to the rocket. And so the momentum of the exhaust in an inertial frame is the small amount of mass that's been ejected times the velocity measured relative to the inertial frame, not measured relative to the rocket. Setting the initial momentum of the rocket, m times v, equal to the final uh, momentum of the system, we get this expression. Now keep in mind, delta m, that's a small quantity. And so the change in the rocket's mass, of course, is the initial mass plus the change in the mass. As we'll see, delta m is going to turn out to be a negative number. So this is the final mass of the rocket after the exhaust has been ejected times uh, the velocity of the rocket plus delta v. That uh, delta v is going to turn out to be a positive number. And then we need to subtract from this delta m. So that, remember that delta m is a negative number, so in order to get a uh, momentum for the exhaust, we have to multiply that by a negative, so minus delta m times the velocity with which the exhaust is leaving the rocket as measured in an inertial frame. If we expand the right-hand side to first order in the delta quantity, so remember that delta m and delta v are both small which means any time we're multiplying a delta m by a delta v, we can ignore that term. We can assume that that's smaller than the other terms. And so the right-hand side of this equation just becomes m times v, so that's m times v, plus m times delta v, so that's m times delta v, plus delta m times v, so that's delta m times v. Now, in reality, there would, of course, be a delta m times delta v term. But that's second order, so we ignore it to the approximation that we're applying here, okay? So anytime you have a delta quantity multiplied by another delta quantity, you assume that's small enough that you don't need to include it in this approximation. Okay, the rest of the right-hand side is going to be uh, delta m times v, and then delta m times negative uh, vx, as so you get this term down, you get these terms down here. Okay, so writing everything out again, we get the left-hand side, that's the initial momentum of the rocket alone, and that's gotta be equal to the final momentum of the rocket and the, and the exhaust. Uh, we see that we have an m times v on both sides, so they can subtract that, and it gives us a zero on the left-hand side, and then a couple of other terms cancel out as well. Delta m times v minus delta m times v, and what we're left with on the right-hand side is v is m times delta v plus delta m, the little bit of mass that's left the rocket, times the v exhaust, uh, the velocity with which the exhaust has left the rocket as measured relative to the rocket. In other words, the mass of the rocket times its change in its velocity has to be equal to 
negative the change in its mass times the exhaust velocity. And remember that delta m is going to turn out to be a negative number. We can rework things, and, and instead of taking deltas, we can uh, take the limit as, as delta t goes to zero, in which case we'll get differential, so these are now infinitesimal quantities. And so we've got dv, some tiny, tiny infinitesimal change in the velocity, is equal to negative dm, which remember is negative, divided by the mass of the rocket at any instant, all times the exhaust velocity. So this is a differential equation we can then integrate to solve for the velocity as a function of the mass. And we get an equation that looks like this. So v minus the initial velocity is equal to the log, the natural log, of the initial mass of the rocket divided by its final mass at any instant, all times the exhaust velocity. We can rewrite this equation to solve for the change in mass from the initial mass, m0, to the final mass as a function of the delta v that we need for our rocket. So the delta v we might need to launch a spacecraft into orbit around the Earth, for example. What we find is an exponential dependence that the final mass is equal to the initial mass times e to the minus delta v over v exhaust. In other words, the mass ratio between the final mass for our rocket and its initial mass is equal to this exponential of the change in the velocity that we need uh, divided through by the exhaust mass with a minus sign out front. So what this means is if you need a big delta V, if you got to climb out of a big gravitational well, say the gravitational well of the Earth, you're going to need an enormous mass ratio. In other words, an enormous amount of the material in your rocket that you launch has to be expelled as exhaust. So a typical delta V for a low Earth orbit, so it puts a spacecraft into orbit uh, at an altitude of, altitude of about 160 kilometers, the delta V required is about 8 kilometers a second. A typical exhaust velocity for a rocket is about 5 kilometers a second. So if we plug these numbers into our rocket equation here, what we find is the mass ratio uh, is e to the minus 8 over 5, or about 20%. So that means about 80% of the initial mass in the rocket has to be ejected uh, as exhaust in order to launch this object into low Earth orbit. This is called the tyranny of the rocket equation. In order to put something into uh, even a significant orbit, uh, you require an enormous amount of material uh, to be exhausted. Of course, the uh, derivation we've looked at here ignores the fact that gravity is going to play a big role in decelerating the rocket. In fact, uh, a rocket launched from the surface of the Earth does not have uh, its momentum conserved. Gravity is constantly doing work against the rocket, and so you need really even more uh, mass to be exhausted than we're showing here.